You'll notice it has all of these longitude and latitude lines on that. Well, a pumpkin is pretty you know, spherical, but it has these like ridges and stuff in it. And so I want to be able to edit those, you know, make those ridges kind of stand out a little bit. And if I left it just like this, I'd have to move every individual um, line in here, and that could take quite some time. So under symmetry, you'll see we have something in here called circular. And what that does, you can kind of see these green lines appear. Now, I'm going to make a mistake to show you what would happen if I said OK. What this basically is saying is anything that happens on one side is going to happen in all of these other quadrants. So if I were to push this line in, you'll notice, um, let me change it to that guy. It'll basically just kind of change the whole shape, right? It's not giving me the result that I want, okay? So what I'm going to do instead is I'll use the sphere again. We'll say uh, 12 for the diameter. Right here, the symmetric faces. Not a lot of people know about this tip. If I come in here and say 2, you'll notice that it adds those extra lines in there. In fact, if I were to say 3, for example, I now have three symmetric faces in each area. Well, let's just go with 2. And now what this is going to allow me to do is basically modify one of these lines and it's going to modify it on all of these green lines, but it's going to leave the black ones alone. So for example, if I were to grab that edge and pull that out, you'll see that sure enough, it's leaving that line fairly alone. It's having to move it a little bit to keep G2 continuity. But you can kind of see how I'm only editing one and it's going all the way around. And so that's going to come into play here as we work.